Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week of the morning studies. And as you see here, we, we have the chart from Thursday uh, that you guys went through. But uh, before we go through this and, and uh, continue in Judges chapter 5, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this morning. And thank you for uh, the time that we have had to study your word uh, this past Sabbath and the time we have here each morning uh, to open your word together. We just pray for your spirit's presence as we continue to seek you, to seek your presence. And we invite you into our hearts, into our minds, into our character. We pray, Lord, that we can reflect your character to all around us and that these things that we are studying uh, will become uh, useful for us in our walk with you and that they will show in our, in our relationship with others. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. So it, it was nice seeing you guys go through this on Thursday without me because I could see that you understand what's happening. And it is a bit of a fresh perspective to sort of watch you guys um, discussing when I can't have input. I did have a little bit of input when I was on the chat there, uh, but that wasn't very much of the study. And there are things that, that you missed that I would have mentioned, uh, but there's things that you saw that that I probably wouldn't have explained that way, but I think it was helpful. So it's really good if, uh, when we're going through these studies, that people have comments and, uh, and questions and that we can sort of challenge uh, what we have seen in these lines. But we can see that this, this line here, the Song of Deborah and Brack, is very solid. Now it goes up to uh, the third angel arriving is Judges 5.13. And um, I can't remember if you got up to that verse. Um, I know you were working towards it. Do you, um, do you remember exactly what, what you got up to? I think it was 513. You got up to there. I'd have to look. Hang on. I think at the end, I think we, you at least commented on it because you commented about the verses that we're going to have to study, uh, which is the line below us or below that line, you can see that we have that at the bottom, which we haven't done yet. Right. Just a moment. Okay. Yeah, so um, as we went through the rehearsing, which is examining the foundation study, which was March 7th, 2021, we got to, uh, I'm pretty sure, December 25th, 2021, and then January 11th. So was there any questions that people had about this line? Other than we haven't put uh, here, this fourth, fourth angel arriving, we would have to put these verses. Um, well. <clears throat> so we're saying the fourth angel arriving is this section from Judges 5, verse uh, 14 to 31. That's, oops, well, that. we, we had just gotten into the fourth stanza, which begins at Judges 5, 9, and then runs to the 13th verse. And right. I, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying about this, but um, we've seen so far with the, with the different studies that there is a, there's kind of a combining of what we're seeing as waymarks and what the um, translators had seen with their their stanzas. Yeah, so they had in their stanzas, what was the, they, now they just 
created these stanzas of the poem. How did they find those stanzas? Was that something in the Hebrew or do you know? I'm not certain. I just know that in the Bible that I'm using, it's broken out into stanzas. And in the more recent Bibles, they don't do it that way. Okay. Um, so the stanzas are broken out which way? Okay. First stanza, beginning, of course, with Judges 5.1 and going to, to Judges 5.3. Okay. Second stanza is from 5.4 five, and 5.5. Five, five. The third is 5.6 five, and 5.6 five, five, to 5.8. Five, okay. And now then you, four, we five, have this, nine to 13. Right. We have this broken out with 5.8 on 5.8a and b. Yeah. So we'd had quite a conversation about how they chose new gods. Then there was war in the gates. Mm -hmm. And then was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Yeah, that gives us the January 11th date. Right. It, well, it, it gives us two dates, the November 9th and January 11th. Yeah, but I'm saying 40,000. You divide that by 360, you get 111.111, et cetera. So, so that to me is kind of uh, the symbol of January 11th. Or if you divide it by 111, you get 360.360, 360, 360. Right. Right. So, so that marked that January 11th and that being the Levitical chiasm being the formalization of that. November 9th date. And, and what's on November 9th is I do present on November 9th um, this understanding uh, of the relationship between the mind calendar and the 391 uh, of Revelation 9, right? right. So, so the 11900 I show and how that relates. So what I ended up uh, presenting um, more specifically, I guess, was I was presenting the 273, but in that 273 came from the Mayan calendar and its relationship to um, these these periods of time, right? In, uh, in 1190, so. So if I go here, new share. Right, so this is what I presented on 11.9. Right, I showed this uh, structure of the Mayan calendar with the 11.9 <laughs> and then um, compared it with uh, the 391 years, which is 142,810 days, with the back tomb that's 14, 144,000 days, right? That's 394.2583 years. And then I used two different calculations using the 142,810 divided by 12 times five. So that's just taking one twelfth of that and um, multiplying it by five, which is the 0.5, to get this extension. And what I was trying to do is see if this lines up with um, July 18. But what I got instead is I had two different ways that I could do this calculation, right? So I could take this number or the 144,000 number. And then I added uh, one-tenth of that to it. So one-tenth of this is added. And I got this 65,454, which led me to um, October 11th, 2019. And I did this on October 10th, that I first did this calculation. And then, um, and then I did it with 144,000. That brought me to April 9th or March 27th, 21, Julian. Um, 2021. And then um, 
and then I noticed that this was double between these two dates was double of two, 273. And so I noticed that the center date was July 10th, the 10th day of the seventh month. And um, so this is what I had presented on November 9th, right? Uh, now, th and that's because there I have the 273s, right? So then I focused on that number, but I first had to present this idea. So, so the fact that we have this in connection with this structure, I, I mean, it's pretty amazing, right? I mean, it's... Uh, Brother Theodore, yeah. can I ask, I, I know I probably should know this, but what is back to? Back to is 144,000 days. Okay, that's why good. is it called back to? Because that's what the Mayans called it. They counted periods of 144,000 okay. days. Because on the Mayan calendar, they, they it's a day count calendar. And so they group it into, you know, the first 20 days. Uh, so that's 144,000 days. 144,000 days. Okay. Right? All right, because I was trying to figure out what back to was, and I, I apologize for not knowing. That's okay. That. Yeah, that's a, that's fine. Other people may have the same question watching the video. Um, but yeah, so on November 9th, I present this. I never even think about the idea that, you know, 11 9 is November 9th, and that we're presenting this on November 9th, and that it has something to do with some kind of structure. Um, but anyway. That's the structure that we have. And we didn't know back then, of course, that the 11,900 11, days from Stephen's birthday to September 11th, and then, which is a reverse of 11,9, and then 1,190 days from November 9th to Stephen turning 54, which is this last February, February 11th, right? So, so that characteristic of Stephen's birthday in connection with this, I think, is pretty remarkable. Now, I do know that there was there was something else about, about uh, Stephen's birthday that I forget. Um, So I can't remember where it was, but I know I figured out something else with his birthday regarding uh, that period of time. Oh, so I actually had figured this out that there was from November 9th, 2019 to February 11th, 2023, 1190 days. I had figured that out before. Because uh, I see it on one of my old charts here. So I figured that out at least a year ago. Um, so here, here's the chart. This is on my other file. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if the rest of the beginning of this chart is correct, I assume, because this was just like a working copy. But you can see here I have this uh, Asher symbol. But here I have the February 11th, 1969, 11,900 days to September 11th. And then I have over here from November 9th, 2019, 1,190 days to February 11th, 2023. So, so I did notice it before, but we didn't have it as part of a line, which now we do. And we can see how that that structure uh, supports this, right? Supports th that fact supports this structure. <clears throat> so then, uh, the Levitical chiasm, obviously that that's you can see the first three um, way marks there: the first angel arriving, the first angel formalized, and its empowerment. How they're all connected. Um, because once Jeff discovers the Levitical chiasm, then I have a model in which to 
look at the 777 days and see if there is a similar structure dealing with that. So the the 63 day periods uh, line up with these 777 day periods. And so that was just, you know, and then from that, I see that we're on a line of failed predictions. And I email Jeff on April 26th, unintentionally that I email him on that date. Because that's the 26th day of the fourth month. That's where July 18 is in its Gregorian date. In its Julian date, it's going to be the 10th day of the fifth month. And we see that the arrival... So I'm saying that the prediction is going to fail, and it does fail, right? But then we have in uh, chapter 20 of Ezekiel, where where, uh, elders of Israel uh, come and meet Ezekiel. They sit before him, and that's on the 10th day of the fifth month, right? And, of course, uh, Ezekiel 20 represents 2020, but it also has in... Um, Ezekiel 20, it is Ezekiel 2012, which is when uh, um, the Mayan calendar comes to the 13th back tune, 1,872,000 days after it commenced in uh, 3113 BC. And of course, 3113 BC, that's where uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and 2020 are quoting from. They're quoting from is um, e- um, from Exodus thirty one thirteen, so thirty one thirteen BC and twenty twelve are tied together as well as twenty twenty with this mind calendar and Ezekiel. So I know that's if somebody's not familiar that could go by you pretty quickly, but the point is twenty twelve and three thirty one thirteen are tied together by the Mayan calendar. So so this I noticed back in um, uh, 2018 in November, and I presented that. The other thing too was that we have two different ways of looking at the date. Uh, One is August 11th, 3113 BC, um, which is the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And then um, if we look at it as uh, September 7th, which is going to be a Julian date. It's going to be, anyway, it's going to be the 10th day of the fifth month on the biblical calendar. So so this Mayan calendar ties together these two symbols, uh, the 26th day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the fifth month. So we would have to say in order to accept the second message, which arrives on July 18th, you have to accept the first message, Right. Right. If you're going to be benefited by the second message, you have to have accepted the first message. Well, isn't that a point that we've established several times? Right. But we can see clearly here in this line how the second message arriving is dependent upon the first message being accepted. Well, here again. Yeah. As you're as you placed on the line. Replacing verse 510 with July 18th. Yeah. Now, verse 510 has an alternate Hebrew or an alternate reading, which is not that we are to speak, but that we are to meditate, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. And the way that we're talking about is walking according to the old paths. Right. So So this, yeah, yeah, go on. So in this situation, we are being brought to understand that we are to meditate and remember what had been occurring during the Millerite time frame. Mm -hmm. And then apply it to what's going on within our time frame. Right. Would that, would that assessment. Yeah, definitely fair assessment. Because, and and the thing is, I mean, more we we know it's not just speak because, I mean, it's the word that means to muse, meditate upon, study, ponder, right, consider, put forth thoughts. 
uh, which is really what we do. Right. And then who was it that was to ride on white asses? Well, um, those that sit in judgment and walk by the way. Okay, but... Now, the way there we can see is 1870, right? Okay, right. Uh, and then walk is 1980. And, and for me, that's August 11th, 1980, the day of my conversion. Right, which is... One four five seven. Uh, one four five eight seven days prior to July eighteenth, right? Which is the number of days that the manna falls, and the manna is God's word, right? Okay, but <clears throat> here, as you as you have pointed out in the past, when we're looking at this word white, yeah, we're looking at a word that's been used only once within Scripture, yeah. It's a derivative of Hebrew 6713. Right. But the asses that are being referred to here, are they not expressed in the feminine? Uh, yeah. So the word here, it, it says a she ass, she donkey. Um, now, that's because it comes from this word. Uh, um, hard mighty rough strength strong right so it's not it's not the usual word we we use when we talk about um like islam per se but it's she asses um so what do you make of it being in the feminine well <clears throat> i'm asking what there is to be made because the the situation and the, and the combination of the words in Judges 5.10 is pointing to something that is more pure. Now, is this a is this a group that have a pure faith, a pure religion? Could be. Yeah, and definitely it's athenote, right? So there, they just have the feminine plural. Right. In this case, I'm just looking at it in the Hebrew there. Right. So you can see the the Vav and the uh, Tav at the end. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, the other thing is uh, uh, we have this, um, this word, and, and it's kind of interesting in the Hebrew because in the English, the King James, uh, they put this word at the, the siyak, at the beginning of the verse. But it's actually placed at the end of the verse in Hebrew. And so that is, if you look at the word prior to it, that's going to be in the way, right? That's 1870 in Hebrew, uh, the Strong's numbers, right? So July 18, the 187 symbol. And then... This word right after it is 7878. Now right. we know that 78 times 24 is 1872, July 1820, right? And it's doubled here. So 7878 is I mean, pretty significant in the context of what we're looking at with this verse. So here we have a verse that we placed as the 10th day of the fifth month, July 18. 2020 right <laughs> the symbol 187 followed by a doubling of 78 which is of course referencing the second angel's message which it arrives there in this line so i mean, I mean to me this is just and, and of course we have you know 1980 there as well uh, august 11th 1980 my conversion which is connected to july 18th by this falling of the manna so I don't know. It's it's just very remarkable. I, I mean, it's hard to hard to grasp how you could have something like this occur that would just be random. So so I'm pretty sure that 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 way mark is solid, um, and this line is solid. So.
Yeah. So, so as far as the, as, so you're saying with the white asses, I mean, I mean, this would re represent, of course, Ellen White's messages. I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. And, but, you know, we're, we're also being dropped pointed to the fact that when when we see this that has to deal with the asses that our focus also is brought into sharper focus because of islam right because that's going to be about islam yeah because <clears throat> these that meditate in judges 510 as we take the segue then into Judges 5.11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in places of drawing water, there shall they re rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. And why are they going down to the gates? Um, well, I mean, this is addressing um, the fight over the message. Right, the battle. The battle, yeah. But it's also, as it's saying, the righteous acts toward the inhabitants, which is in italics, which we know was added by the translators. Uh, yes, and and there the word villages um, is um, the magistry or the leadership, right? All right, right. So that's that's actually, I mean, it can be translated as villages, but it's based upon the idea uh, perizon, right? Is the word, um, and. Um, so yeah, so it, it it has to do with the organizational structure of a village. So it says basically the village ceased. Well, what is that? I mean, that that has to do with what happened to FFA in that in that history. It's a doubling right? too. It ceased. It ceased. It ceased in Israel. Yeah, and in uh, so in the Hebrew here, you're going to see um, th that words chadal, uh, <clears throat> right? So it ceased um, amongst the leadership, Perizon, and the magistracy, right? Um, and then it says. Um, in Israel, it ceased. It's actually sort of like a mirror. Does that make sense? All right. So it ceased um, amongst the magistracy or leadership. In Israel, it ceased. That's that's the order it's written. And then, oh, that's interesting. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of interesting too here in the Hebrew. Um, so this word arose um, and um, so it ceased in Israel, and then it says, um, and Deborah says, until that I, Deborah, arose, and, and that's going to be two words. So the first word is shall, um, which is used as a prepositional prefix, right? So on account of, uh, of kum, which means to rise. Um, 
and 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 it has lots of different meanings to various applications literally figuratively intensively and causatively to abide accomplish be clear confirm continue decree endure uh, so all these different different ideas so this is just not just and, and it also means rouse up right so um like to awaken and then she says and it's doubled i arose whom again a mother in israel okay so so we have this doubling here with this arose and in this line um we, we're placing it at September 7th, right? 2019. Okay. And so we're, that's when Jeff arose, when the inhabitants, when the leadership or the magistrates ceased. And um, that means proper, properly to be flabby. Um, that is, uh, desist, be lacking or idle, failing, forsaking, leaving. Um, so it's just not, not just ceasing, but it's, it's losing strength, right? Giving up. So, so this is that whole history of the darkness of Parminder's movement, and then then FFA steps in, right? Deborah arises. And then you have, of course, verse eight, now dealing with that battle over the institutions of FFA, the School of the Prophets, Lambert Church, and FFA itself. Right. So, I mean, I can't think of anything that's much as, that fits as well as this line. Just, and maybe it, part of it is just, that we've spent dealing with these lines quite a bit, and now we can sort of put them together more easily. It could be part of it, but this is such a solid line. And, and we know that we could probably even create another line here uh, at the beginning of this. That is when we look at this line, um, we have those first seven ver verses. I mean, we could apply all of those verses to the Levitical line itself. Could we not? We should be able to. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we just say, well, that's the period of darkness. But that, that Levitical line um, is connected to that. So when we look at Deborah and Barak, oops, where is this here? In De Deborah and Barak, I mean, we see that September 7th there. That's the empowerment of the second angel's message. And you can see that there, um, that all the symbols of the empowerment of the second angel's message are, are at September 7th. So we could just say, you know, that... Um, that those first seven verses up to verse eight, and you know, first part of verse eight, is this history that we had in the whole line of Deborah and Barak, because we know that it's rehearsing this history. But then we, we look at a period of darkness, the period of darkness here is at 11.9, right? So even though there's this reform line, this reform line is going to be about the time setting, um, you know, that ends up leading to 11.9, that's witnessed to by all of these these dates and events at the Levitical line. So, so it's just repeating that history. And, and then it's even going to talk about Shamgar. Of course, Shamgar is... Um, specifically that history that deals with um if we go back on these lines right shamgar is going to deal with um 
all of that history of time setting, right? That is, uh, it's going to deal with the basically the events that I'm connected to in answer to Parminder's message, right? That is, this is a line that shows here we have something that's being presented, light that's being presented that's going to um, show that Parminder's message is wrong, right? So these are this is sort of the counter light to Parminder's darkness that begins way back, um, you know, in 2012. So we have this darkness, the Sunday long prediction of Parminder, and then we have this message of Shamgar. So, so that fits in perfectly with this line of Deborah and Barak, and this being mentioned then in the song of Deborah and Barak, right? And and because it almost seems like why is why are they mentioning Shamgar, right? <laughs> Unless they're actually referring to the lines that we've been addressing. So so to me it's it's just a very clear indication that these lines are constructed correctly. It's it's remarkable actually. So um I didn't need, mean to spend so much time on it here, but um, I think it's important to recognize that uh, when we start moving forward, then, um, you know, from verse 14 onward, uh, we're going to be zooming into that latter part of the line. Right. And that latter part of the line is um, January 11th, 2023. So now we have to figure out what this means. Is there anything else about that line that uh, we need to comment on then? Well, have yeah. we Excellent. have we really completed this i mean in when we're looking at this especially in using judges 5a or excuse me in in using judges 5 512 of course as as you were just pointing out we have this doubling the awake awake deborah awake awake so we have the doubling twice right yep. Now, and we have two, we have, well, at least two primary messages presented then. Correct. Uh, the 777 years from 457 to 321. And we have um, the message of uh, Collins' message, uh, both at that same time. So there's a, two messages that we re primarily recognize on December 25th, 2021. And, and they're complementary messages, though they are being addressed as contradictory messages by some. That is, some see it as, you know, an either or, so to speak. But we, we recognize that what Colin had been given was from God. But just that without combining it with everything together, it can be misleading. Right. So we, we recognize that that we have to study it, but we're going to draw different conclusions if we don't accept all of the light previous and all the light following that God has given us. So all of the light has to be considered, not just some of it. But why why is it said then utter a song? Um Okay, so significance be there. Um, let 
Well, there's a number of things. Okay, so when when it comes to Deborah and Barack, we know that we have um, uh, symbolism with their names. And, and so I need to go and look at some of these points. So Deborah, her name is a B, and we connect that to North Bumblebee Road. Right. But we also have 1683. Now, 168 is the number of hours in a week, right? Correct. And three, of course, is refers to the three days. It's a symbol. And um, so we have done this in other times where we take a number, can see that it's it's three of the digits are the number, and the other one is just a number that you can multiply by. Well, you've got you have the you have the three days. We also have the three angels message and we have the three members of the Godhead. Yes. Well, let's just deal with the math here right now. Yeah, okay. I know. We have all that. But we, I'm just saying we can take 168, the number of hours in a week and multiply it by three. Right. We get the number 504. 504 is 252 times two. Right. Correct. Okay, so we have this symbol here, and the 504, um, there's 252 days from November 9th to July 18th, and then 252 days from July 18th to March 27th, 2021. Now here in this case, we don't have March 27th, we have March 7th as the formalization, because that's when we began uh, to rehearse that is examining the foundations. So that's in 511 that we uh, rehearse the righteous acts, right? So we have all these symbolisms in the Hebrew numbers there as well. Now, now 168, of course, is by itself um, is a number that refers to, um, uh, and we saw this in, in the other lines that when we're in the book of Joshua, um, and, and also in Judges as well. But that means a tent, right? And of course, we have this tent in the story of JL as well. Right. right? So this tent, I've noticed that my home address from when I was a kid, which of course is the tent I lived in, is 168 times 77. That's 12936. Now, <clears throat> um, so we have that in the name of Deborah. Now in Barak, we have 1301. So this 1301 is the number of days times a thousand um, that we would uh, count. From the first day of the first month when when the, um, the, the, the first day of the first month is first given as the first day of the first month. That's in 1533 BC, April 12th. And that's going to go to April 5th, 2030, the first day of the first month. That's the number of days. So one, three, zero, one, zero, zero, zero days. Right? So, so that's, pretty remarkable that we have Barak's name meaning that. And so this song of Deborah and Barak is this combined message, right? It, it has to do with the school of the prophets, right? On North Bumblebee Road, but it has to do with this message of Barak. And so what is this message of Barak, the 1301? Now, Stephen also used 1,301 years and found connections with the years themselves. But, um, but we know it points to April 5th, 2030. It, it symbolizes chronology. So, so how do we address this?
So here it is, you know, there's the 1,301,000 days. And, and you can see we did this in Judges 15 that we noticed this, right? So that's going to be later on, not, nothing to do with Barak, has to do with Samson. But we see that symbol with Barak as well. Well, okay, so we have this symbol, this 1301. Yeah. And the admonition is, and lead thy captivity captive. <laughs> what? Yeah, so, so we didn't really fully address that, I don't think. No, we have not addressed that. Yeah. So why, why is it important that 1,301 lead captivity captive. Okay, so the idea of leading captivity is to be released from captivity. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the idea. So uh, we know that this verse is, is, or this phrase is used in um, the New Testament. Uh, I believe, I'm just going to type it here. Well, it's used other places too. Um, Psalm 68, 18, thou hast descended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts unto men. And and it's going to be quoted in Ephesians 4, verse 8. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So it's just quoted there. Um, and it's also, I believe it's in Hebrews, but it uses a multitude of captives. Remember, where is it? Yeah, that's another one. Multitude. I'm trying to think what that verse is. Um, anyway, so the idea is it's to be released from captivity. Okay, so 1301 released from captivity. That means that this is a specific message, or do we apply the this specific message releases us from captivity, or do we apply this like is being applied in the chat right now that this is to restore spiritual gifts? Um, I don't know. I don't understand why restore spiritual gifts. Well, <clears throat> if this is a release from captivity, since 1915, there has not been a, the, the prophetic message has not really been going forward within the church. And we know that when the church is pure, that all of the gifts of the spirit will be active. Yeah. Had, had the church been pure in 1915, another prophet would have been raised up to have continued the work that Ellen White had done. But the church was not pure. Yeah. So is it possible that a that the 144,000 has been made up at this time and b that those of the 144,000 are seen as having a pure message and being pure of heart so that those those gifts can again be given to the church well, I would say that definitely the 144,000 is not made up yet. 
I mean, we haven't even given the message to the Levites yet. Right. Right. So, I mean, we're not even, we're not there yet. Um, but I mean, I mean, spiritual gifts are being given. Um, but I, I, I just don't see the significance of of how we would get leading captivity captive has to do with the return of spiritual gifts. Um, I don't know. I just, I just don't personally understand why we're jumping there. I don't know that we're jumping as, as so much as discussing the situation to try to come to a, an understanding of, the the portion where as you're saying lead thy captivity captive meaning freed from captivity and quite honestly if this is a freedom from captivity we would be having to look at this that this freedom from captivity is also a freedom from the the oppression that's been going on well now for for at least 12 years over the message that that we've sought to give yeah i understand that but this is still within our line right and you're talking about stuff something that's outside of our line uh, well I, but, mean, I, mean, I don't see that that you know that's fulfilled until the outpouring of the latter rain and and that's going to occur after the Sunday law. So, yes, we typify that in our line. But I don't see how we would jump outside of our line. Because this is about our line, this movement right now. Right? That's, that's how we're drawing out this line. This is it's the present, not the future. I mean, we know it. Is going to point to April 5th, 2030, whatever that means. But um, I still believe that's a symbolic date, not an actual date or event. Um, so, well, let's go back to uh, verse uh, t 10 again. So there's another detail that we need to note. All right. So, so we've looked at these, these numbers of the Hebrew numbers, right? And right. have another one that ride on white asses. Now, uh, this word ride, I mean, it's uh, um, let me see here to mount or sit or ride, ride be riding, rider to cause to ride, to cause to draw, to plow, and uh, to cause to ride upon. Now, um, it's the word rakab. Now, in um, in this verse itself, so there's a number of things about the number uh, because I knew the number looked familiar, and uh, so the number itself, seven three nine two, has some characteristics. One is it's divisible by one sixty eight, right? right. So that, okay, it's also divisible by seventy seven. So we know 168 times 77 is 12936, my home address. Um, uh, it's, it's also um, uh, divisible by 264, the 26th day of the fourth month, right? So that's the other date for July 18th. And, you know, we've been placing this at uh, July 18th, right? The 10th day of the fifth month. So it's in that verse that we have this, this riding upon white asses. Um, so I think that that's fairly significant itself, just, just the number. Now, as far as uh, the meaning of the word um, to ride, and, and in, the, in this case, to plow, right? That is, you ride upon an animal that you then are going to use for plowing. Um, uh, 
now. Um, where is this word here? I'm just trying to look it up. Well, I'm I'm kind of interested from from what you're bringing up right now on this on seven three nine two. Yeah, because first mention takes us back to the story of Isaac and Rebecca. Okay, but the second message puts a smack in the middle of the story of Joseph. Okay. So, um, okay, so we get the story of Joseph and we get the story of Isaac and Rebecca. Because without Isaac and Rebecca, there would be no Joseph. Without yeah. Joseph, there would be no deliverance from Egypt. Mm -hmm. So, so this goes back to these lines that that uh, we understand already, right? Okay. Okay. So it seems like reinforcement. Yeah, yeah. So, so all I'm saying is that all almost all of these words, the Hebrews numbers, have something to do with these lines and these symbols, and so those that ride upon white asses. I mean, it's, it's addressing this study of numbers in relation to Islam, right? That, I mean, I think that would be pretty clear. <clears throat> I agree. It is clear. Yeah. So now what, probably what we need to do is add some of this, these Hebrew numbers in here in these charts. Yeah, it's very helpful. It's it's it puts weight into it. Yeah. So So I'm just going to put uh, judges 5 10 has uh, the Hebrew number um, was 3792 And um, this is uh, 168 times. That's not, it's 1972. Should it be 1972? That's the number. Yeah, that looks better. You say what's one nine seven. What's, what's the number? What's the number? What is the number? <laughs> the Hebrew uh, number. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, seven three nine two. That's what I got wrong. I knew something was wrong. I just sometimes I'm dyslexic with numbers. So um, it's okay, Theodore. It happens <laughs> to all of us, I think. Okay. Um, at least you noticed it yeah yeah it's 44 times 44 right so that's kind of uh, you know interesting number as well it's also um, uh, divisible by 77 Why did you call 44 interesting? 44, because it's a doubling. But it's also a doubling of 22, which means <clears throat> hey, there you go. of restoration. Okay. Right. Good pickup. Okay. And it's also divisible by 264, which is the other real significant one. Uh, okay. 
That's 28 times 264. 28 is 7 times 4. So 7 times 4 times 264 is that number. So anyway, um, we could probably put that in there, I guess. Um, then we have um, so we have some, I'll do it this way. So we have some other Hebrew numbers. We have Deborah in that verse. Which is 168.3. And that is 168 times 3 equals 504. And again, you know, we could divide this by two equals two fifty two, right? And then Barack Hebrew uh, one three zero one, right? That's not in that verse, though. So that's going to be verse 12. So I should do that with verse 12. Okay, so what we had in this verse, I should put that in this other one. Just hang on. Um, let me put this box over here. So this will be Judges 5.12. That's the other verse. So we're going to have this Deborah one and the Barak one. And then we're going to have, uh, so the numbers here was, uh, we had Hebrew uh, 7878, meditate, and that is 78 times 24 equals 1872. And then we had, um, uh, the way, right? Is that the word? Way. Yeah, 1870. I think I put this after. That's pretty self-explanatory. And what other ones in that verse? Chapter 10. Nineteen eighty. Are we dealing with chapter 10 or chapter 5? Chapter 5, verse 10. Right. Yeah. I know, I just misspoke. Um, so August 11th to July 18, 2020 is one, four, five, eight, seven days. Um, I'm just put in here mana. Yeah, because that's the number of the uh, days of falling mana. Yeah. Right. So put this one maybe up here. And this one.
I'll just put in here the one, three, one. So people can look that up because we have that in another chart. Okay, so that should help a bit, right? Having that information. That's the, the that million, that, that's the uh, Mayan calendar one, right? Nope. That's the number, number of days from April 12th, 1533 BC to April 5th, 2030. So. Okay. Right. So we have it on the other charts. But, and we found that when we were doing the story of Samson. So. Uh, now, um, oh boy, there's so much stuff. Now, another thing that um, that we we sort of uh, we we talked. I don't know if we even talked about it on video yet, but uh, I was looking at um, this period of time of the one million three hundred one thousand days. And now it is a period of time that is 187 metonic cycles plus 111 months. Yeah, I remember that now. Okay. I remember you saying something about that earlier. Yeah, so to me, this is, well, quite interesting in the context of this line, which deals with the 111, right? So it deals right. with the 111 weeks, which is, we know the number 1117 um, is, uh, um, is this number that is... Um, uh, how do I put this? So, so we can take it 11 times 17. This comes from the story of Joseph, right? Uh, the 17 years and the 11 and the 11 and the 17, right? So that prophetic mirror that's in the story of Joseph. And we know if we multiply 11 times 17, we get 187. Right. We also have um, another characteristic. If we go 11 times 71, we get 781, right? So also a symbol of July 18th, but 18th day, 7th month backwards, right? So this number uh, 1117, we could also just say 111 times 7, and we get 777. So this ties together the July 18 symbol and the 777 days, right? Now here we have, of course, 111 weeks. But now the significance of 187 metonic cycles plus 111 months. Um, now, why are these two together then? What, why is that period of time that we see in the name of Barak, which goes from when the calendar is first given this characteristic of being the first day of the first month, that is... Until 1533, you can never talk about the first day of the first month in connection with the biblical calendar. You could say of your, you know, your, from the year of your birth, right, or from some other event, right, some time of the year. But to have a fixed first day of the first month, that doesn't occur until the Exodus. And so we're going to count from that date to the first day of the first month in 2030. And we get this. 187 metonic cycles plus 111 months. So what's the significance of that? I mean, we know we can derive from this symbol, uh, you know, we can get the 187, they're related. Now the metonic cycles is a period of just less than 6,940 days. So it's just slightly less than that. So on, on on average, it's it's slightly less, but sometimes a metonic cycle is that many of days because it's whole days that it's counted. 
Um, so is this significant, this 111 months? Which is about nine, nine and a, it's not quite nine and a half years. It's about nine years and three, three months. So, so how, I mean, the metonic cycle is important. So, what what do we do with this? I mean, it's it's a symbol connecting to Barack, right? The metonic cycle is that's the. Um... That's based on that, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Hebrew. Um, it's the lunar solar calendar. It's a natural cycle in the lunar oh, solar calendar. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was. I thought that had to do with the uh, with the uh, the Jews and their their calendars, the Karaites. Oh. No, not well. No. Nothing to do with Karaites. I mean, it's just the lunar solar calendar, the biblical calendar. Okay. It's a I'm natural sorry. cycle that occurs. So they noticed that uh, in 235 months that you would have um, uh, 19 years and that you would you would come back to the same pattern again where the year would line up with the solar year, right? So this 235 months times 29.530 will do it as 587 because the month has gotten shorter over time. But it's it's this number of days. So that's a metonic cycle every 19 years. So you can see it's, it's less than 69,040, just a bit less. Now, if you multiply this by 187, you'll get... 1,297,721. Well, it's actually, we would round that up to 722. Um, so if we count from, uh, I'll do it here, switch screens. So we're just going to count from 1533 BC from April 12th. And we're going to count this. Um, this number, which was 1,297,722. Right. So if I count that number of days, I will get to the first day of the first month in 2021, which is April 14th. Okay. It's probably not pertinent, but uh, I like the last uh, four digits, 7722. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. And, and then there's the 129 in front of it. I don't know if what the significance is on the 129, but I just noticed the 77 and the 22. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we got 77, we got 22. But the thing is it brings us to April 14th, 2021. Right? So that's going to be the first day of the first month. Right? And now that means we have um 111 months to April 5th, 2030, right? So, so all I have to do here is I add to this, to the first day of the first month, um, to 2030, I have to add uh, nine years, right? So it's going to be nine years, I guess, is this 111 months. I don't know what I was saying. So this is going to be 75. Right, so this brings me to April 5th, 2030. And that's gonna give me, oh, I need to go back and finish that. Didn't save that, okay. So then you're gonna see it's 33278 days uh, from that date. So it's it's nine biblical years. 
Right. Does that make sense? 3,278 days. And, and, and if you multi, if you divide that number, so if I go back to the calculator, I don't know if this is boring to people, but um, so we take this number and we divide it by 111, you'll see that it comes to 29.53. It's not exactly to the to the second, but it's pretty close, right? So that's that's 111 months. Now, so we have this symbol of 111 months. We have April 14th. Now, April 14th, 2021, I don't know that there's any real significance in that date. Um, it's going to be, you know, like 15 days or 14 days or no, 16 days. Anyway, it's going to be 16, 17 days past March 27th, 2021. Um, but that's basically, no, it's more than that. Yeah. I'm just here. So that's what I'll do is I'll put this in here. What was that date again for what? April 14th, 2021. And then March, because we mark March 27th, 2021, right? So we don't mark April 14th as anything other than it's the first day of the first month. So that's going to be, um, if you see here on this chart, 18 days. So it's 18 days after March 27th, 2021. So you know, but March 27th, 2021 would be a more important date than the first day of the first month in 2021. We don't, we've never really marked that date for any particular reason, is all I'm saying. Right? Okay. Okay. So, I mean, we're, we're sort of going... Uh, you know, we're seeing these these symbols in that in that period of time, 187 metonic cycles, which I think is very significant. That it brings us to 2021, to that year, right? That means we could look at any date in the year 1533 BC, and we would have 187 metonic cycles to any date in 2021. So I haven't really looked at the dates in 1533 BC. I mean, we're going to have the date for the falling of the manna. You know, we could count from that date. So that's going to be the 16th day of the second month. I guess I'll go back there. You understand what I'm doing here? I can count from any date in 1533, not just from the first day of the first month but I could count 187 metonic cycles. So if I went to, we'll just do this. So we're gonna have on this date, whoops, on the 16th day of the second month in 1533, the manna is gonna fall, right? So I can go one, two, nine, seven, seven, two, two, and I'm gonna to come to that date in 2021. There it's gonna be May 29th, right? Um, now, if I go to the 10th day of the seventh month, so I'm just going to, oops, in 2021, that date was October 17th. I mean, they don't mention the 10th day of the seventh month in um, the year of the Exodus, right? They don't mention that date. But if we, we looked at it, it would be October 17th. Now, uh, the interesting thing about this date, the only interesting thing about this date that I could find is one is it's the 11th day of the eighth month on the rabbinic calendar. And it also, if you look at the Mayan date, the long count, it's going to be 8-17-2, which is backwards the 20th year, the seventh month, the 18th day. So it gives us the symbol of July 18, 2020. Um, now, as far as an event, that is 
on October 2nd, I'm going to be kicked out of the American group for, for the conflict I had with Mark Johnson, right, over the vaccine conspiracy theory stuff, right? And, and I, was, I presented that afternoon, Hebrews chapter 8. And then on October 17th, I picked it up again on Sunday afternoon studies. And, and so that's the only significant thing is that happened to be the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, what would be the significance of me presenting Hebrews chapter 8 on the 10th day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar? Because what I'm dealing with is Christ as our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary, right? Correct. Okay. So, so I think there may be some significance there. What it does is it points to events in our movement. Now, uh, the April 14th date, you know, as I said, there wasn't any, I didn't see any great symbolism in the dates here other than you know, it's it's the first day of the first month, but that's what we started with. Um, so I don't I don't know beyond that. No, okay, reverse that. Uh, re well, one four four. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there you have the hundred and forty four thousand symbol. The fourteen. I've seen this come up in a different study. Oh, okay. And um, now, as far as an event in my, the studies that we were doing, um, so in April 14th, 2021, uh, we are on study number 29 and examining the foundation. So it's not particularly, you know, I mean, we were doing studies every day. So I'm I don't, checking the content of it now. Yeah, so this is the study. Uh, we were reading um, the uh, Time of the End magazine articles from the original Our Firm Foundation magazine. So anyway, that's what we were doing then on April 14th. So I don't know if that's if there's some content there that that's relevant or whatever. But that's what we were doing. And um, <clears throat> but whether those dates are important, it's you know, twenty twenty one is an important year. Maybe there's some other events, maybe um, you know. The death of Moses or something would line up or something. I, I don't know. If Stephen was here, he could tell me what date Moses died. I mean, I sort of know. Um, does anybody know the date that Moses dies? It's not clearly stated in the Bible. I don't remember, but I do remember it being mentioned. Yeah, well, it's in my paper on Leviticus 26, or 23, I mean. Um, All right, so uh, in 2021, <laughs> the I've got uh, January 6th of Ashley Bad, but January 14th to March 27th, which was the 327. January 20th, the school of the prophets is sold for 100, 187 days, after, the day after July 18th. Uh, February 10th, POTUS, second impeachment proceedings. February 12th, uh, I gotta, I'm drawing a blank for that one, um, but it's there. 
October 20th, SDA reaffirms COVID injections. Uh, November 4th, Biden declares vaccine mandate. November 23rd, 2021, number one. Oh, that's the, uh, pre, uh, that was a date. It was the first presentation of on reviewing the 2520. And then um, December 25th, the end of the 777. And December 25th, Colin makes his presentation at, on the presidents of the United States. Those are all the ones that I have for 2021, but it's still growing. Yeah, so April 14th, 1865, Day Lincoln was shot. Um, that was mentioned inside that uh, study. Yeah, okay. And it's also Holocaust Day. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, now according to, this is rabbinic calculation um, that uh, he was on the, it is on the seventh day of the 12th month that Moses dies. And, and the reasoning seems pretty sound on how they, they calculate this. Um, so, uh, so he actually dies on his birthday. Uh, the self same day refers to, uh, the day of his birthday. So he, he lives to be exactly 120 years of age. Right. Um, I, I'm sorry, who Moses, I 120, you're missing it by a few hundred years, aren't you? <laughs> Moses is 120 years old when he dies. Oh, Moses. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was thinking of Noah. Yeah. So Moses. Now, of course, um, we would. Um, so that's going to be the death of Moses. That's not going to be in 1533. That's going to be in 1493. Um, but maybe his his death, you know, the anniversary, like that would be his 80th birthday in uh, the 12th day of the seventh month in 1493. Maybe that's what that's referring to. Um, or, or 1533. So in 1533, he's going to be 80 on the 12th day of the seventh month. Or the seventh, yeah, the, the seventh day of the 12th month. So... That doesn't, that puts us, that doesn't really help us there. But anyway, there could be some other thing. It could be, I don't know, some other event that I haven't thought about. When it becomes important, he'll show it to us. Right. So, at, but at the present time, what we can say is that there is this Jew, this metonic cycle system that points us to 2021. <clears throat> and, um, and that's that's going to be in 512. Now the thing is in 512, that is going to be like the 20th day of the ninth month. So maybe what we should do is just count back. Yeah, seven times twelve is on the 1843 chart. So I know that about Moses' uh, death, the date they have. So if we go to December 25th, 2021. Right, and we end up counting back from that. Um, this one, two, nine, seven, seven, two, two days. Um, that's going to bring us to the twentieth day of the ninth month in fifteen thirty-three. So, um, so whether the twentieth day of the ninth month it has any event on it in fifteen thirty-three, I don't know. I probably should. The only 20th day of the ninth month I know is, is the Ezra 10-9.
So. <clears throat> Okay, so we, we went, we didn't cover as much as I wanted to, but uh, we can see that this is fairly solid line and we got some more information on the chart. So we're a bit over time. So unless there's something important, we can close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And uh, we pray for the study this afternoon. Uh, we just pray that you can continue to lead and guide us. Help us to understand these things and um, to look at, into them on our own. We pray for this movement. We pray for each person. We ask for your angels' care and protection throughout this week. And we pray for your guidance. Thank you for all your blessings. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.